you like paranormal, true crime, and some cryptids, or just anything weird, check out Ouch, Was That a Ghost? Brought to you by your host, Liz. You can find Ouch, Was That a Ghost on Spotify, Apple, or any audio platform. New episodes drop every Thursday. Seconds left in the first half. Cross court, Bukanevich. That's 100. Maya Bukanevich now with a hundred career three pointers. Welcome to the Behind the Mic podcast. And now here's your host, Jordan Smith. Hey there, once again, welcome back to another edition of Behind the Mic, episode five, where we dive into the world of graduation. Congratulations, you graduated, you got your degree from college, you're now a member of the sports media world, but now what? What do you do after you walk the stage? How does your career go from there? We'll talk about all that here in just a little bit. But before that, be sure you subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform it is that you're listening, whether it be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, on YouTube Music, or wherever else you get and enjoy your podcast. And don't forget, on the Spotify app, there's also a Q&A and a poll question available for you to fill out and answer as well. Before we get into the topic, for those of you who just graduated about a month ago, for those who are fixing to graduate here in the next month or two in, in late July, early August, and for those who are going to graduate in December as well, congratulations. You've made it to the finish line. You've crossed the finish line. You have the degree in your hand. You have a sports broadcast or a media degree, a journalism degree, whatever the case is, something to do with media, something to do with sports. You've gotten to the finish line, and you should be proud of that effort because it's a long road. It's a long and windy road. There's a lot of trials and tribulations that you go through to get to that point. You know what they are, obviously. But you should be proud of the fact that you stuck it out, finished, saw it through, and got to watch the stage and said, I'm a college graduate. I have my degree. Now what? <laughs> now what do you do? Now that you have the degree... Now that you're no longer worrying about homework, what's the next step? The first step is no matter where you are in your career, make sure that you always remember and reflect back on what you did in college to help you get your start. It's a unique time in, in everybody's life, going to college and getting all those experiences as a college student, the academic side, the sports side, the media side, and then, of course, all the other extracurriculars that we're not going to dive into. <laughs> but those memories, those experiences, the people you meet, the ones that become lifelong friends, all of those things will carry you throughout the rest of your life. So be sure you never let go of those things. Also, don't forget, when you're applying for jobs, you have that resume. Don't be shy about it. The resume is your friend. In fact, it's your best friend when applying for jobs. Put everything you did on there, all the different experience you had. Even if you, let's say, did a radio call for class credit. Guess what? That's still broadcast experience. Put it down on the resume. Any awards that you got while you were in college. Any leadership roles you had in a media or broadcast organization. Write it down. Any student jobs you had in media, journalism, radio, TV broadcast production, athletic department, whatever the case it is, write it down on the resume. Any and everything you did in college will help you get a job later on or even hopefully right now. Tying into my experience, I had a 
bunch of experience and I've kind of delved into the story already about my career. I won't do a deep dive into it here today. Maybe we'll save that for uh, another episode, maybe a Q&A in the future. So if you want a Q&A episode later on, uh, let us know in the Spotify app or any of our social media as well what questions you have about the career, about the field, so on and so forth that you would like to know. But my experience during college was while I was in college, just doing something originally when I was at Baylor, just to do something so I didn't regret it. It then changed to this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So when I transferred to Sam Houston, I kept that going. I worked at the school newspaper like I did at Baylor. I did student broadcasting like I did at Baylor. I then added some broadcast production while at the school paper doing sports writing and sports editing. I then backed off of that because I was already doing broadcast production and so on and decided I want to learn more about digital stuff, digital content creation, website management, newsletter creation and managing, mobile app creation and managing, a whole bunch of different stuff, of course, while working as a student uh, at the newspaper, doing stuff with the broadcast group uh, for Sam Houston at Athletics for the broadcast production BSN, and being a part of helping create what ended up becoming a multi-time award winning and at at one point the number one student sports broadcast group in the state of Texas, the Sam Houston NSMA group. A lot of, I did a lot of stuff in college and I met a lot of people along the way. The people that I worked with as students who are now off in their own careers in various places across the country. A lot of them staying in our good old state of Texas, but a lot of them spread out throughout the country as well and then the people i met who weren't students but were outside connections that i made connections with and one of them actually was a huge reason and the initial initial connector for the job i have now at rice university but i'll get to that in just a little bit doing all of that winning awards in broadcast in journalism and in in design whatever and all the different jobs that I did, everything and from the college level to the high school jobs I had while in college, anything and everything I did, then you get to when you graduate. And I was in the same boat that all of you are in right now. And I had even started applying for jobs six months before I graduated. I graduated December of 21. I started applying jobs in, Dece- in July of 21 because I knew places are going to take forever to hire people. And that's just because that's the way that the business works nowadays. Everything is a little bit longer, a prolonged process. So unfortunately, it takes a lot longer to hire somebody. So I started early because I knew I was going to graduate and I needed to have something when I graduated or before I graduated. Unfortunately, nothing ever showed up. Luckily, I had the freelance job for broadcast with Sam Houston I had my high school stuff that I still have now that helped me be able to at least have something in the sports media world. But then those six months after college, same thing. I'm applying, I'm applying, I'm applying, and either never hearing back or getting a bunch of no's or having an interview and then getting a no after it. It affected me quite a lot. It affected my morale. It affected my my eagerness to want to keep applying to jobs. And eventually, I stopped applying altogether, you know, as aggressively as I did. It went from applying to 10 jobs a week to applying to one job every two months. It was deflating. It, it, It hurt in the sense of I knew where my skill level was. I knew I had a lot of experience and I just, I wasn't getting that opportunity to be able to show somebody. And it really affected me mentally uh, and emotionally as well. And that's how I got to that point of basically not even continuing my job search. And that is one of, and I, uh, I've told people this recently when they've asked about, you know, advice when job searching, that's one of my, probably my only regret in this career thus far was not continuing to go after it and continuing to push even past its six-month point to try to find something. But 
it was something that happened within those six months that ended up turning into something two and a half years later. Actually, a year and a half later, if I could do math correctly. <laughs> In that spring of 22, all right, just graduated, I was still applying, but slowly losing hope when applying for jobs. I had been recommended to help fill a, a radio role on a freelance basis during crossover season of basketball and baseball when they were running short on radio people and they needed somebody to fill in for women's basketball coverage. The school, Rice University, just down the road here in Houston. Got in conversation with the voice of the Owls and J.P. Heath. He told me that I was recommended to him. And he said he liked my stuff, and he asked me if I could fill in for a couple of games for women's basketball. I said, absolutely. I will absolutely do that because never did I think I would get the opportunity to do Conference USA coverage of any sport at all, whatsoever in my career. I didn't think I'd ever get to that point. So the fact that I was given the opportunity right out of the gate at college to at least be a freelancer and help with it just a couple of games, I took it. Because as I've stated in previous episodes, any opportunity that comes to you, take it. You never know what it's going to turn out to be in the future. But I'm purposely leaving out the name of the person that recommended me to JP. Because this person was somebody that I met while I was in college. He was not a college student. He had been long out of college. But he's somebody who was already in the business as a broadcaster doing ESPN games for Sam Houston. His name, and if you've been in the Houston area and watch college athletics, you've probably seen his face or heard his voice or heard his name in that or as a Dynamo backup for the Houston Dynamo. His name is Matt Peterson. He has turned into a great mentor and a great friend of mine in this business. He was the one that actually recommended me, uh, and I didn't even know until he texted me and said, hey, I just recommended you. For this, uh, they're looking for people. Uh, they should be reaching out soon, with them being Rice. And I absolutely thanked him for that, so on and so forth. Did the two games in the spring of 22 for JP. He was thankful. He said, I sounded great, uh, or at least good. Um, gave me some advice and said, I'm, uh, we'll probably have this again next season, so I'll, I'll put you towards the top of the list, and we'll go from there. I said, okay, great. Next season came around. There was a game in December that I filled in for was supposed to be a game in February of 23 that didn't end up materializing. So I did one game that past season, the 22 to 23 year. Go into this next season, the 23, 24 season that just finished. I'm signed up to do two games again, like regular, like it had been for the last two years. I was happy with that. I was excited about it, especially because of the fact now that rice was moving to the American. Again, a conference I never thought I'd ever get to broadcast in the American. And I was already signed up for two games during crossover season to help him out once again. I was happy with it, elated with it, and couldn't wait to do them. I then get to about December, beginning of December-ish of 2023. This just this past December. Probably just a little, a little over seven months ago to the date. And I'm talking with another mentor of mine, current broadcaster for the Sugarland Space Cowboys, uh, a mentor, a friend of mine, and my boss when it comes to the high school stuff I do right now, and Gerald Sanchez. And I'm saying, hey, I know Rice hasn't done stuff in almost a decade for women's road coverage. And I know that because of the fact that he was the first one that didn't do road coverage because he actually did Rice women's basketball. And right, I think it was either right before or right after he started, they had gotten rid of Rice women's basketball coverage for whatever reason. And I asked him, I said, I know there isn't road games, but would it be overstepping if I asked to maybe do a close road game or something if the current voice of Rice women's basketball, Jason Metco, was unavailable? He said, no, absolutely. Plus, what's the worst they could say? No, and you're so back in the same spot. I said, okay, I'll call and ask. I asked, and they said, no, probably not. Maybe not till next season. It's something that they would like to have happen, but 
season's already started, can't make it happen, so. But the, but JP said he appreciated me calling and asking it showed determination and, and a willingness to want to do more and so on and so forth. I said, absolutely. I'm happy for the two games I have now. Looking forward to it. End the call. About a week and a half goes by. This is the Wednesday before Christmas weekend. And I get a call from JP. And he said, I don't know what you did, but thank you. <laughs> because apparently, after I had called him and asked about road coverage, just a little short time after that, him, Learfield, who's the broadcast manager for, and the broadcast partner for Rice Athletics, and Rice Athletics themselves all got together and said, we want to do Rice Owl Women's Basketball Road Radio again. They're a great team. They're, they're on the precipice of doing something great. We want that coverage. And JP told me, he said, when that conversation was happening, I was one of the first people he thought of. And I don't know if that's just because I'd done freelance games for them for the last couple seasons, or I just talked to him asking about it a week and a half prior to this conversation. But either way, I said, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for thinking of me. He asked me to put together a couple of reels uh, to send to Learfield. So I frantically got together and looked through the three games, only three games I did for Rice at that point. And I found something. He asked me to send one. I sent two because I didn't feel that just one was going to benefit me. I don't recommend doing that for anybody else. I was just paranoid. So I sent in two. And he said, thanks for sending those in. I will get them over to Learfield and we'll see what they say. I said, okay, great. I'm not expecting to hear anything back because, you know, at least right away, because obviously Christmas is coming up and bowl season had just started. I'm not expecting anything to happen, especially with the fact that Rice still had a bowl game coming up two days after Christmas. So we get to Christmas weekend, do all of that. Nobody knows that any of this is happening whatsoever. I haven't told a single soul that any of this is happening, which is the opposite of what I usually do, but I purposely didn't because usually when I tell somebody that something is happening or a job is potentially happening or an interview, whatever, usually it gets jinxed and then it doesn't happen. I, I know some people don't believe in superstitions. I do. So I purposely did not say a word to anybody. <laughs> and then becomes after Christmas, the bowl game happens. Rice loses to Texas State and... I said, okay, I'm not going to talk to him right now because obviously there's a bowl game happening. Just lost, whatever. Day after the bowl game, I'm like, you know what? I want to ask anyway. <laughs> I don't recommend doing that, but I ended up asking. I just called and I said, hey, uh, quick question. Uh, or actually, I called and I, and I couldn't reach him, so I left a voicemail. Um, and he texted back and said, hey, sorry, feeling a little under the weather, uh, but just... I haven't heard anything back yet. Probably won't hear anything for another week or two at the latest. Or at the earliest. I'm like, okay, no worries. I, don't, I figured probably with, with Christmas and with bowl season and everything going, probably wouldn't hear back right away. So no worries. Let me know when you hear from him, and I'm excited to talk more about it. 48 hours later. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Two days later. This was Wednesday when that happened. It was now Friday, December 29th. I get a call from J.P. Heath, and I miss the call. <laughs> I wasn't near my phone at the time. He leaves a voicemail. I listen to the voicemail, and in the voicemail, he says, Sorry, I miss you. You know, Call me back when you can. I have good news to share with you. And I'm thinking, there's no way in the world, after he just told me, that I probably wouldn't hear at the earliest, a week or two, at the earliest, not until the next year, the calendar flipped. 48 hours prior is what, is what he told me. It would be another week or two before. I'd probably hear anything. So I frantically call him back after listening to the voice. I say, hey, 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 sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I missed your call. I was, I was away from my phone, blah, blah. He's like, no worries. I come bearing good news. And he let me know that Learfield had, had chosen me for... Rice women's basketball radio coverage. And I was stunned. A job that had not existed three weeks prior, I now held. Partly, I feel, because I asked a question about it almost three weeks prior. 
about maybe something happening that didn't exist. Very, very good timing. And a lot of people will tell you in this business, things happen because you're in the right place at the right time. And there have been plenty of examples of that right place, right time for my career. And that was the latest one. So I get, you know, awarded the job. He gives me his congrats. And I say, thank you. We talk for a little bit. And I'm sitting there. And of course, I'm thinking, holy cow. I just got a radio job broadcasting Division I college basketball for a team in the American Conference in my hometown of Houston. Wild, wild stuff. And the only person I could think of in that moment before I called my family and, and let my friends know and all that was my grandfather. My grandfather, uh, Edward Paul Frazier, um, who has since passed away, uh, he was my biggest supporter in, in this career. Uh, anytime that, that he would listen, uh, he always told me about how excited he was to listen to my games, how much he enjoyed listening to my games, uh, him and my and my grandmother. And we always talked about it when we would meet up for holidays and just any other time we would see each other. We would always talk about broadcasting uh, and sports in general and talk about where, you know, where we were going to go, what we were going to do, and and where, where hopefully I wanted to go in my career and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and I'm lucky that the last game that he ever heard before he passed away uh, on Father's Day 2021 was my final student broadcast at Sam Houston State University on the student radio station, 90.5 KSHU. It was the 2021 FCS National Championship game where Sam Houston made the comeback and won their first NCAA title in the football program history. So that, that's something that I'll always have with me. And so I was thinking about him, I was getting emotional, and then I finally call my mother, tell my friends, and of course they're all freaking out. Oh my god, that's amazing, Bob, wow, congrats, da! Like, thanks, just don't say anything publicly yet, I can't make an announcement until the calendar flips. I'm like, okay, that's fine, that's fine, fine. So, all of that, and then I start the job, obviously, this past January, um, you'll see it, it's still the pinned tweet on my Twitter, but I start the job this past January, Rice then goes on their run, they lose five games to end the regular season in a row, they win four straight in the American Conference Tournament, and they put up quite a show and a battle against LSU in the round of 64. Although they lost by 10, they put on quite a show to really put Rice on the map, and all I have to say is it's been a wild last six months of my life. Um, and even with that, I have another job announcement that I'm not going to say right here. I'm going to wait until July 13th. So make sure you go to my personal Twitter at Jordan Smith PXP. In fact, all of my social media platforms, it'll be posted on at Jordan Smith PXP. So make sure you go and, and follow that. Um, but all of this to say some advice. Build those connections while you're in college with people who are students and people who are not students who are professionals in the business. Had I not made that connection with Matt Peterson at a random Sam Houston football game and talked football and career with him in the press box at Bauer Stadium for an hour to an hour and a half straight in a random Sam Houston football game in fall of 2018... I would not have that recommendation for almost four years later that he gave to Rice to open that door to start that relationship and for me to eventually have that job with Rice Women's Basketball. So build those connections while you're in college with anybody you, anybody you see. Make business cards for yourself. Put your contact info on there. Put all your social media channels on there. If you have a website or haven't made one yet and are looking to make one, make it, put your website on there, all of it. Make business cards, have them for when you make connections, so on and so forth. And then another piece of advice. 
I talked about in episode two of the podcast on the how to sports play by play job or podcast episode is find if you're in college, find whatever opportunity you can to get started. And if you find an opportunity to do something while you're in college that has to do with the college, whatever, great. Even if it's high school coverage, great. Find something outside of your college work or your high school work, whatever the case may be. That may not have to do with broadcasting, may not have to do with sports talk, may not have to do with whatever. But it'll help you learn more about different aspects of media, of content creation, so on and so forth. Audio editing, video editing. For me, for example, whenever I was the digital director at the school newspaper here at Sam Houston, or I say here, at Sam Houston, when I was a student up in Huntsville at, at, in college, I created and ran the website. I created and maintained and, and published every week the newsletter and created and maintained and updated the mobile app while I was there. All those three things I learned while doing that. So I had that experience when I left college to say, hey, I have a whole bunch of broadcast experience. I have a whole bunch of written and digital journalism experience. But I also have X, Y, Z. Because the way that media is nowadays, the way the business is nowadays, and any professional can tell you this, you need to learn how to do a little bit of a lot because you never know what is actually going to land you a job in media in any role it may not be a you know for example if you want to be play by play you may not find a play by play job right away but you can at least go somewhere and work something else that you already have experience in or you can at least convince the place hiring to give you experience but if you already have that experience they're more than likely to hire you you get that experience in something else maybe you're a stats intern, maybe you're a spotter, maybe you are a production member, whatever the case is, and you can work your way into a play-by-play role eventually. You know, same thing with, you know, journalism. You could be uh, a, just a regular stats guy. You could be a score caller. You could be any one of these things. You could be a delivery person and try to work your way up. Find out things that you can do outside of just play-by-play, outside of sports talk, outside of TV reporter, outside of whatever those general, the main titles are, find other things in media and content creation that will help you get a job. If you can't find something in those titles you want, you can at least get something in one of the subsidiaries of those different fields, X, Y, Z, that could at least get you something that you can then work up towards where you actually want to be. And I say all that because if you don't, you're not going to have anything after you walk the stage. So you got to make sure you at least build some kind of an experience, you know, and when you do walk the stage, try to, let's say you do college broadcasts, like for me, for example, you do college broadcasting, you do high school stuff. When you walk the stage and you graduate, Don't just immediately get rid of those. Unless you already have a job offer you've accepted and you're moving states away, okay, yeah, then you go do that job. But if you don't, then keep those roles. Continue to do them so you can work on your craft. Continue to build on what you have while you're still applying to jobs. So that way, one, you're building more professional experience because there are a good amount of places that will see the experience you did with student media coverage and things, for example, while in college, they won't consider that professional experience. So if you've got something outside of college, do that for as long as you can until you find a job that can replace it in, in, in experience and in, in level of, of where you want to move up in your career, whatever the case may be. But be sure you have those as well. And like I said, Build those connections. You never know what connection that you make is going to land you a job somewhere. Like I said, 
If I hadn't made that connection in fall of 2018 at a random college football game, I would not have been recommended for a fill-in role in spring of 22 and eventually build that relationship to then be hired for an expanded role as part of the official Rice Sports Network from Learfield Group and family in December of 23. You never, ever know what connection you make when will end up helping you land the job that you're looking for. I think that'll do it for us here on this episode of Behind the Mic. Don't forget to subscribe and follow this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to, Spotify, Apple, YouTube, or any other po- podcast platform that you enjoy your podcast content. Don't forget, we also have the Patreon. The link for that is in the description of this episode. Uh, be sure you also follow and review the podcast, of course, on the Patreon as well. Starting in August, like we detailed and unveiled in the last episode, we will start having video versions of this podcast as well, all ad-free. So if you want to visually see things for this podcast, when we have guests as well, you'll see them on screen. But for Patreon members only, you got to be subscribed to the Patreon. So again, link for that in the description. Don't forget to review the podcast as well. Let us know what you think of it. Let us know who you would like to see on the podcast as well. And also all the social media links for Behind the Mic is all down in the description below. I want to thank you once again for tuning into this episode of Behind the Mic. I will see you next Wednesday, 2 p.m. Central, for the next episode of Behind the Mic. And we'll try to see if we can get a guest on for next week. I have a lot better and higher expectations for getting one next week than we were supposed to have for this episode today. But either way, stay tuned for that on our social media pages so you'll be notified as to who it is for next week's episode. So once again, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week for another edition of Behind the Mic. Thanks for listening to the Behind the Mic podcast. Listen to every episode of Behind the Mic on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Music. Open any of these apps and search Behind the Mic. Then hit the follow button so you won't miss a single episode.